424 once again with NASCAR E2! And in this episode of our season with Kyle Larson's number 42 Target Chevrolet, we are going to be completing race 9 of 36, which is going to take place at Richmond Raceway for the Toyota Owners 400. In the last episode, we raced at Bristol Motor Speedway and got ourselves a 12th place finish with a car that seemed like it was only capable of finishing back in the 30s. That car was so freaking tight, we kept running people up the track and I tried to keep the racing as clean as possible. And I think we kind of did that with what the car was offering us. And then also last weekend, we got our second win of the season at Texas Motor Speedway. So right now, we have a four-way tie for drivers in terms of wins right now. And that was the O'Reilly Auto Parts 500. So that was a good weekend overall. And this weekend, as long as we don't do particularly bad, I think I'll, I'll just be fine with it. Because also this weekend, I'm going to be on my way and attending the Talladega Super Speedway race. And the Cup Series, you know, the actual NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series. And that is the same race that's going to come out tomorrow in this season mode right here. Uh, the Geico 500 race 10 of 36. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of shadowing the fact that anything in this game is, you know, be whatever it is. Here are the point standings right now. Jimmy Johnson still in first place. Joey Logano in second. Kyle Busch third. Martin Trex Jr. fourth. Um, you can see all the winners right there. We only got four of them, and all four of them have two wins. That would include us, because we finally got ours last weekend. Blobbity, blobbity, blurby, blur. You can look at the point standings if you want to. I really don't think I need to go looking at the playoffs, but yeah, I don't know why I go viewing the whole point settings. I mean, it's not that important. I feel like the only thing that's important is like the, the top 16, and that's, you know, the playoff settings, of course. But let's get to Richmond. I'm not so sure about this because the cars, they're more agile, and this track's got a horrible apron. My apologies if you can hear my mom watching TV on full volume and my friends in the other side of the room playing Uno, as, yelling as loud as they possibly can, but yeah, everybody's having their other kind of fun and, you know, getting in the way of what we're trying to have as an experience right here. I get that a lot, but it's it's kind of severe right now. Now, let's go into qualifying. Uh, hopefully this car by default can actually steer. That's something that we didn't get the Xfinity Series. I should expect it to work just fine by now. Here we come off of turn four. If I'm correct, this is going to be a day race. I think it was a day race um, at the beginning of the season in 2017. I know now that it's a night race. I can't tell if this is, you know, like supposed to be noon or if it's gonna be really late in the afternoon whenever we finally get to the race or not, but in the Xfinity series, it was really late in the day. Okay, what do we get? 31st, that is on the inside, so that is very, very good. Uh, let's go ahead and find out who's on the pole. Let me guess, this is gonna be a night race and I have to go do qualifying all over again and rechange my paint scheme and everything. That's, uh, that's really disappointing. I was expecting this to be a day race if that's true. I want to know who's on pole. Who's on pole? Kevin Harvick. Okay. I didn't look at it the first time because I'm a moron. Nope, this is going to be a day race. Glad that I was right about that whenever I started the video because if it was a night race, I would be using the uh, Credit One Bank Paint Scheme. and uh, We kind of destroyed that car at Atlanta, so they're taking their time to repair it. Uh, I don't know if I should have made any adjustments. The car felt fine. Just got to get into the corners well and come off well. The thing is, if I was faster, I'd be on the outside. If I was slower, I'd be on the outside, so it's a good thing I would perform just as I did in qualifying. I'm kind of pushing Ty Dillon right here because he's not going anywhere. Let's try not to lose the bottom. I'm going to try moving my way through the field without um, hitting the apron, trying to get forward. These guys on the brakes harder than I want them to be, so I have to have my patience. It's a 12 lap first stage. Dive in right here. Oh my goodness freaking car I was almost hitting that wall I'm trying to keep Ty Dillon from getting underneath me as we come off the corner uh, whenever I hit the brakes the car starts to veer off to the left a little bit that's kind of scary we've already made up a few spots Ty Dillon back off man oh my god your Kyle Larson would be the kind of person to have to tell Ty Dillon to do some shit like that but no Ty Dillon's just doing it to get on my nerves he's not actually good we all know that for some reason, Chase Elliott, Dylan R. Jr., well, Dylan R. Jr. belongs back here, but Chase Elliott's back here. That kind of sucks. I see Ryan Blaney as well. Oh, my goodness. Diving into turn one, trying to get underneath Ryan Blaney. Don't get on the apron, JC. I tried. I don't know why I bothered whenever I wasn't that close to him. Did not get that 38 car underneath me. Ryan Blaney's holding the inside. He ain't letting me by. And if we stay on the inside, we'll pass those people on the outside, but... These guys are just keep getting runs off the freaking corner because I have nowhere to go. Here we go, here we go. 
Ryan Blaney is giving me room now. Threw it in there hard enough. Really tight off, but if I make it looser with an adjustment, it's just going to be really loose in. Whenever I hit the brakes that time, my car started turning to the right. Sometimes it veers off to the left, sometimes it veers off to the right. I don't even understand. Okay, we're almost halfway through the stage. We're in 20th place, so we're doing well. We're making some decent progress. Uh, Joey Logano is back here. Joey Logano, he won this race in 2017, but then they shoved a cucumber, uh, they shoved a cucumber up his ass. I was, I was really, you know, having some pun-worthy moment right there, but then I fucked up my sentence, and now it's not funny anymore, so fuck me. Uh, I get the cucumber. So we got a caution, and I don't know if it was for debris or an actual wreck, someone hit the wall or what, but that's not ending the stage early. And I'm not pitting, no one else is. At least we're in 19th. We've made up 11 spots since we started the race. And, uh, well, actually, that's not 11. That is um, 12 spots. If it was 11, we'd actually be in 20th. Uh, now, let's just see if we can get some passes on the restart. And we go underneath McMurray and Magano. Trying to keep it from hitting the apron, but still making up positions. Oh, there we go, hitting the apron, turning hard right. Car is not getting off. And I lost all that shit that I worked for in this stage. Well, I lost it all. I'm going to go get it back, and I ain't going to play fair. Hmm. I'm going to try to finish 19th or better in the stage now that I lost all those freaking positions. You ain't wrecking your car. Keep it under control. Oh my god, I get so freaking tight off the corner even though I had someone help me finish the turn. Now Dylan R. Jr. is underneath me. Okay, we finished 18th place in the first stage because someone couldn't keep control of their car if we crashed into them. They're way down at the bottom. All they had to do was spin the tires a little bit and get it straight, but they didn't. Ugh, I'm telling you. These freaking aprons, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, you know, play nice anymore whenever the aprons fuck me over. Okay. So, we're not taking pit stops after stage one is complete. We have 19 laps estimated on fuel, so I'm assuming that our next pit stop is going to be after stage two. Assuming that the uh, next stage is going to be like 18 laps or something. I don't think it would be that much longer than the first one. So, we got to come to the restart on the outside, but I think we should be able to get there within just a few seconds. Anyone if we have a gap down there. The Art Jr. is kind of staying there at the restart, so we're going to be stuck on the outside for a bit going through the middle at the same time, that's not a good idea, but you know me. I don't have good ideas. I just have ideas and I use them. Ryan Blaney got pushed on the outside wall because I made it three wide and he didn't check up. I mean, I'm not going to check up. I'm the one who's further down to the bottom. The guy who's furthest on the outside whenever that wall creeps up has got to be the one to check up. Okay, let's just keep making progress. I don't have time to worry about Ryan Blaney anymore. Even though Kyle Larson and Ryan Blaney are probably really good buddies. Not anymore. Not in this championship. Stage 2 is actually shorter than stage 1 was. Get off the apron, JC. I think the apron is a lot less severe whenever you're off the throttle, to be honest, but I could be wrong about that. Maybe it's uh, braking and throttle, but whenever you're just off of it and you let it kind of slide around the apron, it's not going to spin it like that. This car ain't finishing corners anymore. Kyle Bush is creeping back up upon me. Also, there was some situation up ahead off of turn 4 last time. Someone slowed up, and then everybody... Uh, they were all checking up in front of me. I kind of pushed Kyle Bush, I think. We're in the top ten. And we can keep up making positions um, as long as I can get this car to stay at the bottom in the turns and uh, actually gain time going in because obviously at a short track, gain time going in is what you want to do if you want to make progress because you know, coming off, it ain't that big a deal. Now, if you can't gain time going in, it's because you've got worn tires, obviously. Uh, rarely do you get runs off whenever it comes to short tracks in this game. We saw that at Martinsville and um, I think Bristol as well. I'm right behind Ryan Newman, but there's no gap underneath him for me to pass. We get so tied off because we're losing all that time, and Kyle Bush is right there underneath me now. Uh, throwing it underneath Ryan Newman, somehow sticking it to the bottom. Getting back on gas and time. Running up the track just a slice, but we might be able to get Ricky Sinhouse Jr. right here as well. Oh, we're really moving right now. Yeah, it's going to get tied up. Yeah, I'm going to make you check up because I'm a douchebag. Okay, we're in eighth place. Still got a few laps left in the second stage. Get to the bottom car. Oh my god. Is that Jamie McMurray over there? It looks like Jamie McMurray. I don't know where he came from. I mean, I saw the uh, Cessna front end. I think it was Cessna. So we're closing in on Matt Kenseth in that uh, Circle K car. I don't know if we're going to have enough time to gain and actually make that pass happen. 
and I'm working on it. You Knowing my aggression, I might just be able to do it once we get underneath them and uh, make them check up a bit or run them up the track. At a short track, that's something I honestly wouldn't have a problem doing with it, considering clean racing at a short track. Now, dirty racing, you just go crash into the back of somebody and dump them going to a corner, but uh, I only do that whenever you give me anxiety, obviously. Freaking aprons cause me to lose everything that I worked for in the first stage, so I was like, you know what? I'm getting anxious. We're going to go passing all those cars back, and we're going to do it dirty. I'm not exactly focusing that much, but I'm just trying to stay positive, you know? One thing I've noticed uh, in the past few months is that, by default, I'm not that positive. I'm barely neutral in my commentary. Uh, I feel like I'm neutral or positive right now. I haven't really been able to close up that much on Matt Kinsa. I need to break more going in so I can dive it off and actually keep a run going. Something's happening to Almendinger because he is falling like a rock. I think that confirms we'll get seventh place as we go into turn one right here. Oh, way too much on the brakes, JC. Oh my god. And here comes Ryan Newman past me. So, I'm not going to get seventh. I'm going to lose eighth place, and there's no time for me to get back to Newman. I'm just going to hold the bottom and keep the push from getting past me. That was embarrassing. I could have taken advantage of AJ Allmendinger's troubles. I don't know if he got loose and got sent back a bit with some contact or what, but I hit the brakes way too long and the car just freaking turned down to the apron and uh, all fucked it up. So I was correct about my uh, assumptions earlier. We are going to be taking our pit stops under the caution after stage two. And I think that might take us to the end of the race without another pit stop, but no repairs needed. Four tires, two cans of fuel, and uh, I don't think we need any adjustments. I think overall the car is quite balanced and really works for us. So we lost two positions. That keeps us on the inside at the final restart. Okay. Let's win this race. I think we can do it. We can win at Richmond. Did we win at, uh, Ren? Did we win at Richmond at all in this game since I started playing? I don't think we did. I know we've gotten our share of top five finishes. Overall, we've been a pretty good, um, average score here. Average score? What? Average finish here is actually pretty good on my part. I'm pretty sure of that, but... I got puberty. Should I say, hmm? I said, hmm. Oh, my God. Wow, this is a long stage. Let me think. Uh, 52, 30... That's like... That's like a freaking 23, 24 lap stage, isn't it? I don't know. Comparing the fact that we had stage one, stage two, I mean, th those together were like uh, 23 laps. I think we can make it to the end without another pit stop. I have to check the, the tire and fuel thing in a bit. Get off the apron. What is Jeffrey Earnhardt doing up here? <laughs> uh, that is Jay McMurray, so I'm pretty sure I saw him earlier, but it's just weird because he was way back behind us and I had passed some cars, and then all of a sudden I looked at my mirror and I saw him flying past those same cars. I don't know if he was faster than us or not. Yet, yet another situation off of turn four that I didn't even speak about because I was talking about something else from earlier. But yeah, at least two. Uh, Martin Trex Jr. and Daniel Suarez. I think it was Daniel Suarez. I see him behind me. Those two are just freaking way off pace all of a sudden. And I'm running Martin Trex Jr. up the track because I keep missing my entry to the corner. The car keeps getting down the apron whenever I do that. I have to get off the apron or I'll spin the freaking car. And now I've lost the inside to Matt Kenseth and Dylan R. Jr., who's actually been moving his way up through the race. I'm trying to get back to the inside. We're losing everything now. Progressively. It's not happening quickly, but oh my god. I mean, at least this is kind of spaced out, but we get these positions back, and i got to stay to the inside at the same time. Dylan R. Jr. is in fourth place. I swear, he was in like 20th earlier. What are you doing down there? No, Chase Elliott. Oh my God, Dale R. Jr. What was that teamwork motherfucking bullshit you just gave me? Oh my goodness, he slowed up so much on the inside lane that forced me to the outside. He was practically giving a pass to Chase Elliott by, oh, uh, what's the word? Sabotaging my entry to turn three completely. Hmm. Dale R. Jr. doing some spin gate shit here. Hmm. <laughs> that ain't funny. I thought I had a chance to win this race, but we've had uh, me just getting stuck on the outside. Dylan Hart Jr. pulling some stupid crap on me with his teammate. Uh, these tires already feel worn. But of course, the leaders are faster, and it's going to take a lot more effort to just close gaps and make up positions. 
Once again, Matt Kenseth is having issues. Actually, last time it was Truex and Suarez. This time, Matt Kenseth just messed up coming off of turn four. I don't know what's happening with some of these guys. Somebody's way down at the bottom. I think that's Jeffrey Earnhardt. Yes, it is. He's in last place. What happened to Jeffrey Earnhardt? I mean, he was in the top five, and now he's in last place. We had a caution earlier. That might have been for him. He might have had to go down pit road. He changed his tires or something to have some kind of different strategy. But all in all, I think that's the reason why he was in the top five. He had to take a second really late pit stop because of his flipped up strategy. I'm going to try to stay in the top five in this race. I don't think a win is going to be possible. I can't even see the leader anymore. I see third and second. Second would be Eric Jones. The leader is just out of sight. I have no clue who it is. It might be Harvick because he did start out in pole. And it looks like a light blue car from what I can see. And uh, it would have to be that bush car because whenever I was looking at the qualifying results, it was a, it was a light blue thing on the outside of the number four logo. Uh, the laps are counting down. This car is really freaking tight now. I think it's been tight all race, but I don't notice until I'm actually competing with the leaders. Ugh, slam the brakes, trying to dive it in. I just ain't got that grip going to the corners that I want. I probably still have the same grip from earlier. It's just I can't notice it because I have to do much more going to the corners to actually catch these guys. We're doing slowly but surely. Ugh, I just can't do it, man. I'm not enough. God, I'm throwing it in there so freaking much and trying so hard that I'm just not getting anything out of this car anymore. I'm almost hitting the outside wall now that I'm pushing it too much. I need to focus more on having a good corner overall than just being aggressive going in because at this point I'm not gaining any time uh, in the long run. Ooh, kind of used the apron to help myself turn. I don't know if that was a beneficial thing uh, altogether or what. Dale and our junior is fast. He's trying to get around Eric Jones, but Eric Jones is just holding him up. Oh my god, I'm barely touching that apron. Wow, we get so tight off these corners. Uh, once we get around these guys, I don't even be able to stay in front of them. Oh! Just because of the fact that uh, once I start making a pass on them, it's just going to be me making some kind of dive bomb. What am I doing all the way at the top of this track that late in the stretch? Okay, we're right behind Delonar Jr. Delonar Jr. is right behind Eric Jones. Eric Jones, you're really starting to piss off the DJ. Here we go. Hold the brakes long enough to stay at the bottom. You know, the gas, because I want to finish the corner. I don't have that amount of grip that you do, Delonar Jr., so you're going to get some contact. Oh, God. Try not to get stuck on the apron going to the corner, being this far down at the bottom. Ugh, just can't finish corners anymore, so I'm having to hit Delonar Jr. We can get second. First out of the question, unless we get some kind of caution and we can handle a restart well. And Oh, no, no. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. finishes me off. These freaking aprons, man. These stupid fucking 704 Games aprons. Matt Kenseth, hold your banana. Uh, get off the apron, you freaking meme head, JC. Good lord. That could have been worse. You know, I could have fallen back to 15th. We're in 5th. Uh, I'm trying so hard to just get one position. Golly, this difficulty is actually providing quite the challenge right now. And these tires are so freaking worn and shot. Oh my god, that was a horrible entry to turn three. I'm just trying to push this car and get away from Matt Kenseth, and I have to do so much just to manage anything now. Oh my god. Come on. I'm trying to pull away, but I try to have such a perfect corner that I just hit the apron, and I'm getting so close that I have to mess up the corner just to stay away from the apron. It's either hit the apron and spin the car, or back away from the apron a little bit and just mess up the whole fucking corner from that point on. Ugh, I'm trying to stay in front of them. Like I said, I want to get a top five in this race, and I think that I can. Winning is definitely out of the question at this point. I really think I can only gain on A.J. Allmendinger up there in front of us. Ah, uh, Because, you know, the tires are really killing the competition at this point. Overall, we had ourselves a really good Richmond race last weekend. Uh, it was a night race. I was expecting it to be a day race, and I was like, what the hell, it's Saturday. Why were they racing? And I didn't even know. They changed it back to a night race. Why? I don't know. The day races are most often better, but it was definitely the best uh, night race at Richmond that we've ever had in NASCAR. I mean, at least in the Cup Series. I don't know about uh, the Xfinity Series or Truck Series or whatever. Okay, three laps to go. I don't know if we're exactly gaining on A.J. Allendinger. Ah, I'm trying to make good corner entry, but... To be honest, I feel like whenever I'm about to make a pass, I dive it to the bottom and I hold the brakes to the point where 
I gain more time than I usually do whenever I'm just trying to judge the corners by myself because whenever I'm surrounded by other cars it kind of um, motivates me to have a little more aggression than usual and I actually take the corners better in that sense. It's just whenever I get off it's much worse a corner than usual because I have a car on the outside of me. So I have to get off just so I don't hit him and shit. Okay, we are right behind AJ Allmendinger and Eric Almarola, of all the drivers. Well, they gain so much time going off the corner. Come on. It's like Allmendinger's trying to get around him. I have no grip right now coming into the corner. And going off. Allmendinger might just make this pass happen. Ah, it's just... My turn one was not that good, and you can't expect it to be with my tires being this fucking warm, but we got a top five. Uh, and I think we'll do quite well at Talladega. I don't think anything's going to go that bad, so a top five for our first race this weekend is really good. Uh, I could have set a faster lap and got a 105 speed rating, so I wasn't at my best. Maybe I would have been if I had some adjustments in there, but that was a good Richmond race. We had some long, drawn-out green, green flag runs. Golly, that's a tongue twister. And that's something that we can appreciate here because we had some pretty good racing. And some of it was just me making mistakes and getting sent back and having to push back forward again. And golly, the tires! This was like racing at freaking Rockingham rather than Richmond. Kevin Harvick won the first stage, second stage, and the third stage. He sweeped the whole freaking thing. He just dominated this race. We're seeing the kind of domination that he's having right now in the 2018 NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series. Granted, Kyle Busch won three in a row, but Kevin Harvick almost did himself, and he did that in the Busch car. I was trying to get just the slightest glimpse of that all race freaking long, but he was just pulling away. He probably didn't even pass post race inspection. But we got a top five. I'm very proud of that. Joey Logano, 12th. Kurt, Kurt Busch, Kyle Busch, 19th or whatever it said. Uh, Daniel Suarez a lap down. Jeffrey Earnhardt, two laps down, and some other drivers. It's skipped the freaking race results. I can't see it. After our fifth place finish, we dropped back a position. We went from seventh to eighth. Uh, but why? But that, come on, man. How come whenever I do a good job, I can't get credit for that in the freaking points innings? I'm getting tired of this. I've seen this, like, what, four times since I started the year in just so many different games, whether it's NASCAR 08, NASCAR the Daytona, this game. Oh, my goodness. Kevin Harvick led almost, he led every single freaking lap in this race. There were 52 laps, so I don't know what lap he didn't lead. Yeah, we were on the move. Started 31st, finished in 5th. Great progress. Tough break goes to Clint Boyer. Started 4th and finished in 31st. And Denny Hamlin had the fastest lap. I don't know even where he finished or how many positions he moved up, though. Tomorrow is the big day. On my channel, the Geico 500 in this season that we're doing right now, race 10 of 36 at Talladega Super Speedway, is going to come out just about the exact same time that coverage starts for the 2018 Talladega race in the spring that I am going to be attending. So, I, I can only hope that I am actually at the track when that video comes out. I don't know if my car, because it's a Ford, is going to break out halfway on the trip there, or if my hotel is going to have leeches and they're going to just eat my soul out, but let's just, let's just hope for the best. Here are the point standings in full. Jimmy Johnson still in the lead, Joey Logano second, Kyle Busch third. Nothing really changing except for the fact that Kevin Harvick just passed us, and I know all in all, it's really just the fact that he was previously behind us, and he dominated the whole freaking race, so he gets to be in front of us. And our performance wasn't that good, even though it was actual progress compared to what position we were in. And you can look through the rest of the standings right now. I almost caught them race results. Everything is just race results with JC1424, isn't it? And I'll give you guys showing of the playoff standings. We're still fourth place in the playoff standings, but Kevin Arvick is our fifth winner this season, getting his first win. Everybody else has got two wins, which, of course, includes me. Blabbity, blabbity, blur. That first win that Kevin Harvick just got made it harder for all these guys who don't have wins or trying to make it on points, you know, actually get into the playoffs. A.J. Allmendinger is still down there. We've got drivers like A.J. Allmendinger, Casey Kane, Clint Boyer. Uh, Eric Jones is doing good for some reason in my season. I don't understand that shit. But I'll see you guys tomorrow at Talladega. And I'm going to literally be at Talladega, but uh, it's just like a freaking inception. See you next time. That's that, and episode over.